Buildings, power, roads, railways, ports, airports, water, irrigation, gas, telecoms. Infrastructure is critical to economic progress. And in 2012, it was estimated that India must double its infrastructure spend over the next five years through 2017. India is certainly on the move, but if it wants to achieve economic superpower status, it must ramp up its infrastructure. And India has a unique opportunity to do things and build all this infrastructure the right way. By adopting eco-friendly building practices, you not only safeguard scarce resources, you also ensure a national blueprint for infrastructure that is sustainable. Hello and welcome. I'm Manvi Dhillon and you're watching DuPont Presents the power of Shunya, quest for zero. And today we're on a quest for green infrastructure with Shunya harm to the environment. On the show today, we examine, can we build India without giving up on green? Can we build superstructures that are commercially viable and environmentally friendly? <music> Joining me now is Dr. Prem Jain, Chairman of the Indian Green Building Council. He's actually estimating that India will have 10 billion square feet of green spaces by the year 2022. Where do we stand today, 2014, as far as green spaces are concerned? The story of India is incredible. We got to 1 billion four years ahead of time in 2011. Today, as I speak to you, we have 2.27 billion square feet green spaces coming across the country. What are the three biggest challenges for the infrastructure sector today? We don't have roads. We don't have enough mass rapid transit system. We don't have the power. We don't have the water available to us. So we have serious challenges. Our estimate is in the, by the year 2050, that means 30 years from today, there'll be three more Indias created. Now, where will the energy, the water, the resources come from? We don't have them. Why are materials, the nature of materials used, uh, the type of building materials in play? Why is that so critical okay. as we go on this mission of green buildings, right. green infrastructure? Right. Manvi, you must remember, when I make three more Indias, I need materials. I need mortar, I need cement, I need steel. So what we are saying, consume every part of your waste. And mind you, every green building means zero waste. Zero means zero. Mm. Shunya, what you are talking about, the power of Shunya. Yes. It cannot generate any waste. Buildings consume 29% of all energy that is consumed. So it would be great if we could find ways to rebalance the energy we consume with new energy from renewable sources. Hence the concept of net zero energy buildings, highly energy efficient buildings that produce as much power as they consume in a year. Our first innovation, the Sun Carrier Omega net zero energy building goes much beyond small energy conservation techniques. It has developed a comprehensive green energy system that produces solar power to meet all its consumption needs. This model, if adopted across India, could change the face of energy and of living in our country by making zero energy waste a reality. It's just another working day at this unique office in Bhopal. The employees take immense pride in being associated with this exclusive project. Every morning coming to this office and sitting in this environment and really when you feel that okay this is the net zero building that it is generating all it needs from within and it is not disturbing anything to the environment. Quite a unique project even worldwide by world standard it's not just in India. Globally it's a project like this is very rare. 
The Sun Carrier Omega Private Limited is India's first commercial net zero energy building. This green building managed by the husband wife duo offers a viable on-site renewable energy model. It's ideal for electricity generation, storage and internal consumption of the entire building. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of the Sun Carrier Omega Net Zero Energy Building. Yeah, this is a joint venture between the company Omega Ring Bearings in India and Gildemeister Energy Solutions, a German company. Uh, it is possible to work for green things, new technologies, because Germany is in the cutting edge of technology for renewables. Okay, so it's German technology with your capital. Yes. Sort of pushing it and backing it. This is an on-site net zero energy model. Yes. You know, walk us through what that means and why this is unique in the Indian context. Oh yeah, when I thought about this joint venture, the idea was to bring up an office. And when I saw the products, we have the punchline, what is generate, store and use. We created this extreme example where we have shown a real example where this building is totally off-grid. Sometimes people don't believe when they come with me, they are looking for a connection to the grid or the diesel generator set. But this uh, huge building with 1000 square meter of area and 40 tons of air conditioning is running totally on solar. By deploying the Renewable Energy Generator SC260 Solar Photovoltaic System, Sun Carrier Omega has successfully increased the energy yield by 35% as opposed to the static solar systems. Now what is the technology behind this system? What exactly does the uh, sun tracking system do? Well, I call these my sunflowers. Just like sunflowers track the sun throughout the day, these systems use an astronomical programmable logic systems that is based on the latitude and the longitude of a place and from morning till evening at on every 10 sec minutes it moves 10 seconds to align itself towards the direction of the sun. Sun Carrier Omega has also installed a large capacity energy storage system called the Cellcube FB10100 to provide uninterrupted power supply during the night hours and monsoon days. The biggest challenge of renewable energy is storage. FB1000 what it actually does, it stores about 10 kilowatts of energy and it can give you 100 kilowatt hours of storage. So 100 kilowatt hours is actually 100 units of electricity. The particles of sunlight falling on the solar panels are converted into electrons of direct current, which is then further converted into alternating current by an inverter in the cell cube. This AC power stored into vanadium-based redox flow battery FB10100 is utilized for the complete energy requirement of the net zero energy building of Sun Carrier Omega. The building has also incorporated some significant eco-friendly features such as an indoor LED lighting with monitoring sensors, the air conditioning system with ozone-friendly refrigerant R400, 95% recyclable office furniture, 95% heat reflective paint on the roof, rainwater harvesting system and sewage treatment plant ensuring efficient usage of water. In the Belkaria village of Bhopal, Sun Carrier Omega has set up 35 sun tracking solar PV systems on a 16 acre farm. This grid system supplies electricity to the Madhya Pradesh State Electricity Board. But it's the off grid projects that Sushil Prakash is dreaming to scale up in future. I want to see a day in India where you go into a shop and like you purchase white goods, a refrigerator, a washing machine, you go there and on an EMI, you tell them I want one kilowatt 
of power in my house. So this is real empowerment. Mr. Prakash, this show is called The Power of Shunya, Quest for Zero. And in a sense, you've already achieved zero with a net zero energy building. What's your vision for Shunya? Yeah, zero or Shunya for me is uh, moving towards excellence. And in a way, this building has aptly achieved that because it's a net zero energy building on site. The next step is maybe towards zero emission and zero carbon footprint of this building. It is this movement towards excellence that has exhibited Sun Carrier Omega's strong corporate commitment to environmental sustainability, providing a pragmatic solution to companies that wish to build green and work smart. Energy efficiency in buildings is no longer an option, it's a necessity. That's why India's infrastructure sector is beginning to adopt eco-friendly practices in both commercial and residential projects. After the break, we'll examine a green lighting system, an initiative by the Delhi Division of the Northern Railways. The power of Shunya, Quest for Zero, will be back in a moment. Indian Railway is one of the busiest transport networks in the world. It carries over 30 million passengers and 2.8 million tons of freight every single day. According to a report released by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, energy consumption by the Indian Railways has increased tenfold in the last four decades. The energy consumed by the Indian Railways is 2.5% of the total electricity consumed in India. So what's the future? Is it energy-saving measures and devices? Well, the Delhi division of the Northern Railway System has already implemented a whole host of measures that have and can further result in substantial savings in electricity consumption. One of the largest rail networks in the world. The Indian Railways is the primary mode of transport for millions of Indians. Increasing passenger traffic every day means more consumption of electricity. The Indian Railways uses about 12 billion units of electricity a year with consumption growing at an average 5% every year. Moving to the northern region, the energy consumption pattern of Delhi Division Railways is equally towering. Nizamuddin, 3.95 million units. Old Delhi Station, 6.46 million units. New Delhi, 16.30 million units. Looking at the high energy consumption, Northern Railway's Delhi Division has embarked upon a number of energy-saving measures. Why these measures are so important to you before we talk about individual measures? Why did you need to go through this route? See, because uh, Delhi Division is a very big uh, uh, consuming uh, unit for the energy. Just for example, I'll tell you, last three years, our con uh, energy consumption is almost uh, capped to 115 uh, million units. In spite of the fact that our uh, passenger uh, load is increasing, our number of trains are increasing, we are providing more air conditioning, more passenger amenities, but still, because of so many measures we have taken, we have capped our total uh, consumption to 115 million units. An efficient way of improving energy efficiency is to deploy advanced technology. And one such initiative is the automatic lighting systems at the Nizamuddin railway station, which saves almost 12,000 units of energy per year. See, one of the measures which we have taken is uh, on our platforms. Uh, we, uh, our trains are running 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. every throughout the night, uh, the, the entire light is on. So what we have done is it's a very innovative idea that uh, it is known as 30%, 70%. 
when the train is not there on the platform, the 70% light switches off. And as soon as the train comes to the signal, there is some connection has been provided from the signal, the entire 100% light comes on. And when the train departs, again the train lighting load comes back to 30%. If automatic lighting system is a breakthrough, Tapping into solar energy is another big venture. Solar panels, solar power stations and solar geysers have been installed at various stations. Walk us through you know, your solar power uh, installations in both these locations in great detail. See, we have already done 115 kilowatt of uh, solar panels till date and we will be adding 150 kilowatt this particular year, this financial year. And what are we talking about? A Delhi division in Delhi general? Division, Delhi division in general. Okay. We have been doing at uh, smaller stations like Gurgaon, Bhadurgarh, uh, Rohankala. Now we will be doing at Sahib Abad, Delhi Kent. Especially at Gurgaon, uh, the system is standalone system. It, it is of 25 kilowatt. What in terms of savings has it yielded? It's uh, almost uh, 3.5 lakh uh, per annum we are getting uh, saving by way of that. And at Bhadurgarh, almost 4.2 crore, uh, 4.2 lakh we are saving. There are a number of other smaller measures like installing energy savers on high mass towers. High consumption bulbs have been replaced with LED stations lightings and ceiling fans. All of these together sums up to a saving of about 20% in energy consumption. What does it boil down to? the success tick mark, how do you know you're doing well? We have been uh, capped our consumption since last three years and of late it has been going down. Last year it was, last year it was 116, last year it was 115 million units. Now this particular year will be reducing it by say 114. So containing this uh, consumption of uh, energy itself is achieved. With a wide range of energy saving mechanisms, the Northern Railways is surely looking to convert its stations into green buildings with minimal energy consumption. Indian Railway is a very, very old organization. It is 150 years old. In this old infrastructure, it is definitely not possible to make it a shunya uh, power consumption. But we can definitely aim it as far as possible, whatever is our capacity. One thing I can uh, assure you that whatever constructions or new station building or new infrastructure will uh, make it in future, will definitely aim for the zero shun shunya energy. Let's take stock of the two innovations you've seen on the show today with Nenish Sanghani business leader DuPont Building Innovations. Why is it so critical to overhaul the way we approach all kinds of building in India? As we know India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and soon to be the most uh, populous country on the planet as well. Uh, our need for infra infrastructure is going to be huge and as we know infrastructure uh, you know building new one or maintaining them or even retrofitting them consumes a lot of resources including energy water and other raw materials and we are constantly starved for those resources so i think if we do not look at doing this differently uh, we might be in for trouble because we also need to make sure that we maintain our environment safer and healthier for ourselves as well as our future generation let's talk about the sun carrier omega net zero energy building what do you make of it the whole notion of uh, designing a building that uh, in the first place has low energy needs and then trying to service the balance needs uh, through renewable sources uh, and, and systems uh, is just amazing. How do we apply the concept of Shunya to infrastructure in your words? Shunya you know, carbon footprint, uh, Shunya energy waste, uh, to me, uh, I think we are on a journey towards that. Thanks very much for sharing your experiences with us on the Power of Shunya Quest for Zero. Thank you, my pleasure. We're back with Dr. Prem Jain, Chairman of the Indian Green Building Council. He's going to assess the innovations that we've showcased on the show today and also talk about how science and technology can be harnessed to build environment-friendly structures. How important do you think it is for the Indian railways to think about energy conservation seriously? High time because, you know, we have a very commendable system. We probably are the world largest network of railways in terms of the population that we move. 
So I'm delighted that Northern Railway has now become aware of it and adopting these issues. And it's a pointer to what not only Northern Railway, other railway systems in the country must adopt, minimize the waste of their power consumption by going this the method that they have chosen. What is your vision for Shunya when it comes to green infrastructure? My dream is eventually India will moderate to no power requirement, no water requirement, no waste generation and the healthy place to come to. Well, that's an ambitious vision of Shunya that will is set for India. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dr. Jay. My pleasure. For talking Revolution to us on the here. show today. Buildings consume a large chunk of all the energy that is consumed in India. Yet today we've seen the Sun Carrier Omega Net Zero Energy Building. The building is a huge step forward in the right direction. It proves that the goal of Shunya, in this case, Shunya Energy Waste, is a realistic goal. We've also seen the Delhi Division of the Northern Railways cut its energy consumption and energy costs in an attempt to redefine transport infrastructure. The most important aspiration for India when it comes to infrastructure is to build as much infrastructure as we need for our people to live safely and comfortably while reducing our impact on the environment so that we can guarantee a cleaner world for future generations. That's it on this edition of DuPont Presents, the part of Shunya, Quest for Zero, a show that celebrates science and innovation, technologies that could secure our future, human ingenuity that could reduce our challenges to zero. Till next week then, goodbye.